Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Our topic is construction of flexible pavement. In this chapter, we will today discuss a stabilization process that we always used while we are constructing a pavement. Pavement construction stabilization has its own importance to give the strength to the pavement. Okay, so let's start the discussion. Stabilization. Now, soil stabilization is the process of improving the shear strength parameter of the soil and thus increasing the bearing capacity in the road construction. It is required when the soil available for the construction is not suitable to carry the structural load. Generally, soil exhibit undesirable engineering properties unless they are treated to enhance their physical property. Stabilization can increase the shear strength of the soil and it also control its shrink well properties thereby improving the load bearing capacity of the subgrade to support the pavement and its foundation. The soil stabilization is used to reduce the permeability and the compressibility of the soil mass in earth structure and to increase its shear strength mixing additives positively affecting the strength improving and Maintaining the soil moisture content can be achieved by stabilization and that's why to improve or to enhance the inner property of the soil mass we are adding some additives we are adding some material in the soil property so talking about specifically for the road construction we used lime and cement for the stabilization and thus we have these two stabilization lime stabilization and cement stabilization as an additive we are using this two material in the soil mass so let's talk on the lime stabilization for the lime stabilization we can use 2 to 10 percent of the lime in the soil mass Lime stabilization is suitable only for the clay soil. It decreases swelling potential and the swelling pressure in the clay soil, uh, probably the black cotton soil. Now, adding lime to the soil produces the maximum dry density under the higher optimum moisture content than in the untreated soil. Lime produces a decrease in the plasticity index of the soil. The improvement in the strength is partially due to the decrease in the plastic property of the clay and also partially to the pozzolanic reaction of the lime with the soil mass. Lime is also used with the fly ash. So whenever we are using the fly ash, the fly ash content may vary. 10 to 20 percent of the soil mass and the percent of the lime in that particular mixture should be between 3 to 7 percentage. So this was the brief information about how we can use lime with the soil mass and what amount of lime or what amount of other additive we can mix in the lime stabilization. Now let's talk on the construction procedure for the lime stabilization. For that, initially we have to prepare the subgrade. Now, the soil that we stabilize then excavated by the iron borrow pits and get pulverized. After that, some part of the lime that we have already discussed that is about 3 to 7 percentage and the part of fly ash that is 10 to 20 percentage total amount of fly ash we can use is 10 to 20 percentage and the 
part of that 10 to 20 percentage should be mixed as the dry powder so first what we what we did that we have excavated the soil mass we uh, then after we took 3 to 7 percentage of lime and in that portion of lime we have add some portion of fly ash from the 10 to 20 percentage okay then we have to mix the dry powder after that the mixture is allowed to age for a day so we have to cap as it is for a day now preconditioning of the soil will make the pulverization process easier and remixed and then that powder form is remixed then the rest of the lime and the fly ash should be added in the mixture and then after if you found that water is necessary to add so you can add water also in that mixture now the mix is ready to spread and then after spreading the mixes you have to compact that layer with the desired bread and the camber after that the soil line fly ash is cured by preventing drying after drying the surface okay after curing the surface the taste has to be conducted so that we can know that the desired property is achieved or not so the field tests are conducted to check the moisture content during the compaction and also to check the dry density after the compaction now talking now talking on the cement stabilization in the cement stabilization about 5 to 14 percent of cement is added to the soil mass and then the water get sprinkled over that mixture now as cement hydrates the mixture become hard and durable the main use has been to build a stabilized base course under the concrete pavements for the highways or we can say the uh, heavy pavement construction that is at the airfields or the airways now soil cement mixture are also used to provide wave protection on earth dams the soil cement mixture are also to provide the wave protection on earth dams now well graded soil containing that gravel coarse and the fine sand will require 5 percentage of cement by its weight the plastic clays require 14 percent of cement by its weight to make the better pulverization and the degree of mixture there is an optimum moisture content corresponding to the maximum value of dry density or the strength of the soil cement mixed the moisture that is added for the adequate compaction is more than enough to, for the purpose of the hydration of the cement well there are various useful additives which improve the property of the soil cement okay such as the lime for the clay soil sodium sodium hydroxide sodium carbonate calcium chloride such are the additives that you can use in the soil cement now let's talk on the construction procedure for the cement stabilization here first of all the subgrade or the sub base is to be prepared then the soil that has to be used is collected from the nearby borrow pits and it is pulverized in mixing plant then after the cement is added and mixed thoroughly then after the water is sprayed and again it should be mixed uh, it, sh it should be remixed after that the mixture should be sprayed and compacted to the desired grade and the camber then the surface should be cured by preventing the moisture from the escaping by covering with the paper or by moist soil so this was the cement stabilization process okay next we will discuss on the bituminous surfaces that has to be provided on the base course so this is the layout of the 
pavement structure okay here you can see we can we are using the layer on the base course and those are the prime coat tech coat and on the surface that is the seal coat okay now let's talk on the prime coat when a bituminous surface has to be laid on an absorbent or the porous surface such as water bound macadam then a bituminous prime coat has to be first laid prior to the laying the superimposed layer talking about the objective of the prime coat is to plug the capillary voids in the surface also to harden the surface by binding the dust and loose particles the prime coat consists of low viscosity liquid bituminous material such as cutbacks okay in the cutbacks there are two types that is medium curing and the slow curing okay which will enter the voids of the surface so such material are used as the prime coat talking about the construction procedure the surface that is to be prime should be swept clean and it should be free from all the dust and then after it should kept dry here the large pot holes and the depressions should be repaired before the priming the bituminous primer is sprayed uniformly over the dry surface at the rate of 7.3 to 14.6 kg per 10 meter square area using the mechanical sprayer the primed surface should be allowed to care for 24 hours and traffic should not be allowed until it get cured so this was the systematic procedure to follow for for applying the prime coat let's talk on the next that is the tech coat when a bituminous surface has to be laid on the existing black top or a cement concrete pavement then the bonding is provided by the tech coat tech coat may also be provided on the water bound surface which has already been treated by a prime coat tech coat is usually applied by spraying the bituminous material of higher viscosity like the hot bitumen at the rate of 4.9 to 9.8 kg per 10 meter square area the tech coat serves the same function as the prime coat but the main difference is that the prime coat is attached with the base course and the tech coat is attached with the surface course next we will discuss on the seal coat a seal coat consists of a single coat of a very thin surface that is applied over the certain bituminous pavement such as bituminous bond macadam, the grouted macadam premix carpet etc which are not impervious so in general we can say the layer the pavement surface which is not impervious on such pavement surface such seal coat should be applied the main function of the seal coat is to seal the surface against the increase of water also to develop the skid resistant texture and to repair the existing road there are two different types of seal coat the first is premix seal coat and a liquid seal talking about the premix seal coat in the area of low rainfall a premix seal coat is applied over the carpet for this purpose a medium coarse sand that is passing 7.7 mm sieve and retained on the 1.18 mm sieve is used the coarse sand should be applied at the rate of 0 0.06 meter per 10 meter square area 
the binder required for this purpose is 6.8 kilogram per 10 square area okay this layer is rolled by the light tandem roller to give a smooth finished surface using a light tandem roller because of here we are using the sand <coughs> here we are using the sand and this is for the upper surface if it get more compacted it will damage the upper surface and also to give the smooth tandem it also to give the smooth finish surface we are using the light tandem roller the road may be open after the 24 hours of providing the seal coat or the surface tracing talking about the liquid seal coat in the areas of heavy rainfall a liquid seal coat is applied over the carpet in this a hot bituminous is sprayed on the existing surface at the rate of 9.8 kg per 10 meter square area here the grid of 6 mm size is sprayed at the rate of 0 0.09 meter per 10 meter square area and it should be rolled by a light tandem roller okay so with this i am concluding this session I hope student you understand the topic thoroughly. Thank you so much for your kind attention. We'll see you in the next 